Hello and welcome to the Healing Streams Reflection. The title for today's post is God's Word Reveals God's Will. Even the Apostle Paul in 2 Peter 3 9 attests to the fact that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Often, when I get into a spiritual discussion with anyone, sooner or later, we seem to get around to what God wants in a given situation. How to know God's will? How to find God's will? And sometimes, how to avoid God's will are major concerns for most Christian believers. Along with these concerns, I often detect quite a lot of confusion. People say, I do this because it's God's will. And other people say, I don't do that very same thing because it's God's will. Beloved, it is very, very important for you and I to understand that whichever column you belong it's very, very important to understand that the will of God can only be detected from the word of God. A lot of people I talk with seems to think that God's will has been misplaced in their lives. They keep telling me I'm searching for God's will. Whenever I hear that, I ask, is it lost? The concept of searching for God's will makes it seem as though God might be the big Easter bounty in the sky. He hops around the universe, stashing his will under some supernatural bush while we run through life trying to find it. Every now and then he calls down, you are getting warmer. Still other people see God as a sort of cosmetic killjoy, always making people do something miserable or boring. There is also the casual catch, the brass ring on the merry-go-round of life approach, which say, if you find the will of God, that's great. But if you don't, there's nothing to worry about. You are still going to heaven. With all these concepts and misconceptions, what is God's will? Can we actually know? Can we pin it down? Does God really have a will? for your life and mine i believe he does and that he hasn't hidden it anywhere if god has a will he will reveal it there are any number of formulas and systems dealing with how god reveals his will some of them are excellent such as getting to know the will of god through maybe prayer or maybe through meditation or maybe through reading the word of God or maybe studying and searching the nature of God as someone has written he compares finding God's will to sailing a ship according to three navigation lights the Bible the inward witness of the Holy Spirit the outward circumstances when all three lights 
are in line with one another, it is all right to proceed. As one writer lists at least 10 specific steps for knowing the will of God, he declared by saying that being obedient, being open, using God's word, prayer, the Holy Spirit, counsel from others, providential circumstances, evaluation, deciding, and having peace. Interestingly enough, all three of the systems that I've mentioned talk about using scripture. My dear brother, my dear sister, in spite of all this, it's important to do your own study to determine what the will of God is for your life and your family. Yes. You may read certain formulas from certain books that have been written. But the wondering is this. What does the Bible actually say about the will of God? So it's very important to go to scriptures and study every passage as someone does so that you could find on God's will. At times, it will help you discover basic principles that you and I as Christians can use to know God's will for our lives. Maybe let's propose it this way. Principle number one, be saved. Primary among those things, God wills according to his word is the promise from Second Peter. The Lord is long suffering, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3 9. You find them, you find that same thought in First Timothy, where the apostle Paul says that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2 4. Actually, salvation is where the will of God begins. Jesus made this very clear in a brief passage in Mark. His mother and brothers arrive where he is teaching and begin asking for him. The crowd tells him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. According to Mark 3.32, Jesus replied, who is my mother or my brothers? Mark 3.33, then looking at those seated around him, listening to his word, he answers his own question. Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. Mark 334. What Jesus was saying was this. The will of God is that you be related to me through faith not through human family ties. How willing was God that we be saved? But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace. The Bible says you've been saved. Ephesians 2, 4. God was so willing for all to be saved that he sent his own son to die to make his will possible. My dear brother, my dear sister, in the midst of all these, why is getting saved so unpopular on the secular campuses 
or colleges. Because God is getting saved deals with sin. A secular man does not want to respond to any message that talks about his sin. But this is where it all starts. Until you know Jesus Christ personally, you have never taken up the first step into the will of God. Then secondly, being still filled after you've been saved. According to God's word, a second step towards God's will is to be still filled. In the 15th chapter of his letter, designed to help the vision. In the 5th chapter of his letter, designed to help the vision Christians. Resist slipping back into legalism. Paul says, see then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 15 to 18. I used to wonder why Paul would contrast being filled with the Spirit with getting drunk. Somehow it didn't seem a prop. But then I finally got the point. When you're drunk, you submit yourself to the control of the alcohol, which permeates everything. Your app will permeate your system. And when the alcohol takes over, you become the kind of person alcohol influences you to be. That's what under the, under the influence means. And it is also clear that the pagans of Paul's day believed drunkenness enhanced their communion with their gods. Paul shows that it is not wine that does that by the Holy Spirit. He opens up to God. My dear brother, my dear sister. Paul uses graphic negative example of being drunk to illustrate what it means to be filled with the Spirit. When you yield control of yourself to alcohol, it takes over. And when you are spirit-filled, obviously, the spirit takes over. In both cases, self-control is gone and replaced by something or someone else. In both cases, there's total yieldedness to a power within. And the amazing thing about being under control of the spirit is that you don't even have to ask questions. You just are prayed within the will of God. One way to get a practical handle on the spiritual life is to see it as living every single moment in the conscious presence of Christ Jesus. The spirit life is no great mystery. It is simply Christ's consciousness. Beloved, to be Christ conscious does not mean walking around muttering. I know you are there. I know you are there. I know you are there. Now, that's the legalistic fetish approach that was used by the Pharisees. They were sometimes called the bruised and bleeding Pharisees. A name they picked up because they thought it was a sin to look upon a woman. Every time a woman come along, they close their eyes, muted something about, I can look, I can look, and walk smack into a wall or a tree. Now being spirit filled is a matter of living every day with your eyes wide open, saturated with the presence of Christ. And how do you get saturated? Is by studying his word. The more I focus on Christ, in the word, the more the thought of God saturate my mind. The more God's thought saturate my mind. The more I yielded, the more yielded I am to him. It is the same as letting the word of God dwell in your richness. As Paul, as well as in 
Colossians 3 16. Unfortunately, when it comes to the will, God's will, a lot of Christians keep the Christian step of being spirit filled. Instead, they jump right over to the wondering if they should marry Sisu and So, if they should marry Brian or they should marry Alice, if they should go to this school, if they should take that job, buy that kind of car, and so on. They pray and pray for God's will. And they still haven't yielded control to the Holy Spirit. No, God's will is not lost or hidden. It's there in plain sight in His Word. Be saved and then be filled. Our spirit filled. A third clear teaching in God's Word about His will concerns our sanctification. Or in a simpler, more useful term, our purity and holiness. Paul echoed in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 5. He says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you shall abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 3 to 5. Purity and holiness are often uncomfortable terms for Christians. They sound so self, they sound so self-righteous. Actually, purity and holiness are two critical parts of practical Christian life. Therefore, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 3 and 4, you can find several principles for purity. The first one is plain enough. Avoid sexual immorality. Stay away from sexual sin. Did Paul mean sex was evil? Of course not. Sex is a beautiful, glorious human relationship within marriage. But sexual immorality, fornication, In some versions, refer to sexual sin outside the marriage bond. Everything from premarital sex to perversion, like bisexuality and homosexuality. There's a tendency, of course, on the part of older adults to relegate most sexual sins to the young. Adult in their thirties and older clock over the escapes of teenagers and couples in their twenties who are living together without benefit of marriage. But sexual temptations and living together arrangements are not the exclusive possession of youth. In fact, there may be more problems among those in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, the struggles of men in mid-life crisis have been world, even documented by some Christian commentators. And of course, the women are having their problems too. As one, one wife put it, all of a sudden, I've noticed the streets are full of men. For years, I must, I've been mean, going by them with my eyes closed. But now, I see them all right. I hardly see anything else. Beloved, no matter what your age, the sex drive is a powerful force. If the Holy Spirit is not in control, it is too easy to go over the line. Where is the line? When you have to start asking that, you have probably gone over 
it already. Another principle is spirit in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 simply adds that each of you should control his or her own body. There are no exceptions, no special privilege. There are people who don't engage directly in immorality, but they entertain themselves by watching others who do it. Keep in mind also that while you may be able to say you have never gone to such places where they strip themselves, know that television becomes more loaded with violence, soft pornography, and other trust with each new season. What are you watching? Today, evil, lust, and immorality come in all kinds of wrappings. God's will, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 3 and 4, is that no Christian should be entertained, interested, and tied by it. Christian purity and holiness is not sanctimonious, self righteous drive it concerns how we live our daily lives and it is a crucial part of doing God's will if we are running around trying to find God's specific answers for certain questions but are living in pure life why should God give us those answers when we still haven't obeyed his will that he has already revealed God's will is that we be saved. God's will is that we be spirit-filled and sanctified, set apart as part and holy people fit for his use. Have a wonderful day and bye for now.